Hi everyone, Christina Danforth here from HR Jetpack, and today I am with Daisy Ann Wallen, HR coordinator and recruiter with Connecticut Transit, and I'm gonna ask her a few questions to tap into her HR expertise. So let's get started. Okay. Question number one. As the president of a young professionals HR group, how is it different from a regular SHRM chapter? Um, being president is definitely different because you're more engaged or committed to the organization. Mm -hmm. I feel as a regular, just a sharing committee member, you can sometimes become overwhelmed. And if you're like, an introvert like me, it's kind of harder to just walk up to people and just say, hi, my name is you know, Daisy Ann. And especially at events, you're meeting maybe like, what, 20 people a night? <laughs> so it is hard to kind of form those relationships versus being on an actual committee you're learning and actually being involved, you're able to kind of tap into more of those relationships. You have a voice, you have an opinion, you're going to strategic meetings where you actually have some input into you know, the issues that you see and you're able to say, I think we can create a program around this or how about we try this, maybe we can reach the demographic we're trying to get. Um, so I actually love it and I love, and something else is different for me, this is my first leadership role. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I have to make a decision because I'm so used to not having to make the last call, but my committee has been great, um, and I've actually learned a lot just being on this organization and learning just how much it takes to run this organization. Um, so it's definitely been a very positive experience. Great, great. So the next question, I'm sure you have seen <laughs> the articles and the blog posts and the comments and the conversations uh, that are often generalizing how millennials are so different from the other age groups. And so the question for you is, do you think millennials are different from other generations? First off, I want to say, uh, I feel that my age and who I'm going to call um, working professionals get such a bad rep. I think we get categorized as being, you know, lazy. No, no. <laughs> um, I actually, actually I got into it with my aunt on Thanksgiving. She goes, no. you know, you, you guys just want too much. You want to come in and get five weeks of vacation. And you, you know, you don't want to work for it. And I'm like, that's so wrong. Um, mm -hmm. So I do mm -hmm. feel like my age group is different, but I feel like that's based on society. You know, back then you get a really great job, which is a high school diploma. In today's society, a bachelor's is equivalent to a high school diploma, and pretty soon your master's is going to be equivalent to a high school diploma. So I feel like my generation, um, all we want is, hey, I went to college, um, I did what I need to do, now we're coming out with all these loans, and I actually read an article about how our, our age group has had the largest gap in wealth, actually, due to these high student loans. And everyone in my age group, we just have the same mentality of, hey, I just want to get a job where I have opportunities to advance in my career where I have enough make enough money where I can pay my bills and my student loan um, we just want a chance to in my opinion I actually do work and excel and be able to build in this company and yes we would like a work-life balance but who doesn't want to be engaged in your company and believe in their mission and goals because the more your employees are engaged, the more productivity you're going to get from them. Um, we want to make sure, okay, we put in the time in that we're going to be able to just grow and be developed. So, I guess, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you have some great comments because, you know, I've, I've seen some research out there, as a matter of fact, that, you know, has dug into what we consider all these differences between the generations, but there's actually a number of similarities between them in terms of you know, wanting flexibility, for example. Yes. I hear that a lot. And you know, I think that that goes without saying for pretty much any generation nowadays. I mean, with everything that we have to handle and, and what's you know going on in our personal lives today, and maybe in a way to the credit of the millennial generation, if I can make it a generalization here, you know, pushing for that more and wanting that and kind of allowing for the workplace to change and adapt, so then other generations are acknowledging the importance of, for example. Workplace flexibility, okay. you know, having a work schedule. And I'm happy you actually said that because um, I honestly believe that if the other generations have the same opportunities we have, it, they'll feel the same exact way. And I do mm -hmm. feel that we're just the voice because I'll call my dad and go, oh my gosh, dad, you know, I'm going through X, Y, and Z. He goes, I had the same issue. You know, and I feel like what we want is never, you know, nothing that 
other generations have not experienced right, not too far apart right, right. Or, or they have wanted mm -hmm. um their mindset just may have been you know what i'm in a good position right now i'll just stick with it and stick through where we're just like no if it's something where we really can't tolerate or we feel like we're stuck in a position we've been for five six years in company we never got a promotion okay well let me try a different job um so i, I really do feel like we are just the ones that are like voicing it but mm -hmm. like i said everyone mm -hmm. i talk even like um older like yes i've done that it's happened to me before and they're fully able to relate to what i'm talking about and i can able to get some you know advice from them as well yeah great great thank you all right moving on to our <laughs> next question here What's your favorite thing about being an HR professional? Um, I actually have two favorite things. So my first one is that I love that HR is so multifaceted. Um, you're able to really experiment and try different fields and get your niche. You know, you can try a little recruitment. You can try benefits. Do you like diverse inclusion? If you're Go at math, you can be an HR analyst, you can be a strategic partner. Um, if you like to train, you can do training development. I feel like there's so many different areas that you can be involved in where, and it's always changing. And sometimes I feel like I'm like one third of a lawyer because I gotta keep up with the law. It's so true. True. <laughs> there's so much that goes into um, this field, and I think I'm in the field at a good time when we're. You know, we have stepped away from just being looked at as administrative and being looked at as, again, HR strategic partners who are helping align, you know, what our policies are with the company's um, mm -hmm. vision is. And my second favorite thing is actually really being an educator. Um, I love being able to explain to my, you know, I work a lot with new hires and onboarding them and just even explain to them, I, I was surprised to see how many people didn't even understand just tax forms. I see these forms every day, so I'm like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> but I have got so much feedback while, like, you're the first person to actually sit down and actually explain to me because I just always just put any number down and just guess or even just explain the benefits, how many people don't fully understand it. And I've always wanted to be the HR that I want to always put the human back in human resources. I didn't want to become the HR that I feel like we get negatively stereotyped and just sure. it's cold yeah. and we just fire people. I wanted to mm -hmm. always make sure that I'm welcoming and I'm explaining so that what even when I leave, they going forward and go to the job, they when someone is interested and they know how to compare offers, they understand the paperwork. They're not just signing because they don't understand and they can stop in and say hi to me anytime. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> they know the door is open and it's not just a I'm scared to go to HR unless I'm in trouble type of thing. Um, so those those two things are probably my favorite about working in this field. Great, great. No, I, you know, <laughs> I love that because all too often, I mean, for so many years, HR has been seen as like a principal's office or some <laughs> sort or police, right? We we still have that tag we do. here and there. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's great that you know talking through some of the things that you do in, in your workplace and hearing about how you know you're trying to be more approachable. Right. Um, I, I think that makes a big difference. It makes a big difference overall to our profession. Yes. <laughs> Right, moving on to our next question. So what advice would you give someone who's interested in HR as a career? Um, my advice to them is to first, don't say so short. I know I made this mistake of my first job, I was there for years and I'm like, it wasn't HR related, I don't have any HR skills. And it was actually my professor that's like, talk to me what your daily task is. And when I went there, he goes, look, that's onboarding look, you're training someone how to use this module. And he was pointing out different fields. So I want to say don't discredit any of your prior experiences just because you're titled and say human resources does not mean that you didn't have any transfer of skills to get into the the field. Mm -hmm. So I will go to SHRM, look at the different categories they have, and really see where what you do now, where it can fit. And even that means just kind of what I did, talking to someone else that's in the field and kind of just having a conversation, explain to them, help them kind of figure it out. Um, I will also definitely recommend joining a professional organization and being involved and not just signing up, mm -hmm. but being involved, volunteer, join a committee. Um, don't be afraid to ask people questions. I go to um, HR professional all the time, like, hey, can I just ask you, you know, how did you get involved? What advice do you have for early career professionals? Um, what is something that you love? And just having these conversations, sometimes you get they're able to provide so many um, knowledge and different things that you didn't even think about before. Um, I would also impress getting certified. I'm in the process of studying for that <laughs> myself now, so getting certified. Certification. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, pleasure. 
Um, <laughs> and also, don't get discouraged um, with anything when you're changing careers. It's going to take some time, it takes a while. We all hate those dreaded rejection letters that start with their insert name, you know, <laughs> thank you for applying, but mm -hmm. don't get discouraged. Um, even to see if you can volunteer, um, like, hey, can I just shadow you? Watch what you do to get experience. Um, volunteer at a nonprofit or even get a job at a nonprofit. You know, really see where you can get your more HR experience. But I would just say keep trying, don't get discouraged, and don't be afraid to talk to people. Great. Right? I think that's fantastic advice. I love it. It's so true, though. You know, when going into HR, um, you know, there are different skill sets that are involved that are transferable from other functions and other areas, you know, depending on what direction you want to go in. Um, so, yeah, keep trying. You know, definitely good, good advice. And I have one more extra question for you. Tell me about your kale shirt. <laughs> So I'm actually wearing the kale shirt in honor of Christina. Um, <laughs> love kale. I actually really love and adore her healthy lifestyle. Um, but the, my kale shirt is a play on the Yale shirts, but it also is a good promotion for kale and to get healthy and get fit. Um, maybe that's the HR me about, you know, <laughs> wellness programs. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually love it, and I'm happy that Christina loves it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So thank you so much, Dacian, for joining me today and answering these questions. Fabulous information, great input, great feedback. I hope you've enjoyed sharing your, your thoughts today with us. I did, and thank you so much, Christina, for inviting me to sit down and talk with you and make me feel very comfortable because I'm a little nervous. But <laughs> I had an amazing time just talking with you and just vibing off your energy. Fantastic. Great. Well, thank you again and uh, stay tuned for our next HR Pro Talk.